Good evening and welcome to this new year, the, our first new year conversation uh, with uh, Professor Makao Mutua, who's a uh, friend of the elephant, a friend of mine, who's at the State University of New York at Buffalo, uh, distinguished uh, legal scholar there. And uh, Professor Makao Mutua is also chairman of the Kenya Human Rights Commission, founder of the Kenya Human Rights Commission as well, together with others. Uh, and it's great to see you in this new year, uh, looking fit and well, um, uh, Prof. Uh, I trust you, you had a peaceful and healthy Christmas and have started the new year. Well, I think you Americans have started the new year with a bang. Uh, yes, no, we, we try to stay fit over the holidays in spite of all the good food that we're eating. Yeah. And uh, in spite of all the terrible news that... Um, you know that have, that, have, that have hit us over the over the last uh, several several months, especially after the election. Um, not to mention, of course, uh, the COVID numbers, which uh, are really devastating. Uh, we, you know, we are now about to reach four hundred thousand uh, Americans, uh, you know, dead by the virus. Um, over twenty million uh, infected. Uh, so the numbers are really devastating. You know, of course, the good news is that um, <clears throat> the vaccines are here. Uh, you know, the rollout has been uh, rather um, uh, troubled, uh, like everything else under the Trump, Trump administration. Yes. You know, nothing seems to work or to go according to plan. Yes. You know, so the vaccinations are way behind schedule. Yeah. Um, so, but we hope that, uh, you know, they're going to ramp up and uh, more people will be vaccinated. Uh, let me let me let me let me jump um, right into it, uh, Prof. Um, you know, as we sit here, um, Congress is in session, uh, discussing um, the impeachment, the second impeachment of President Donald Trump. Uh, we had uh, what was quite a startling um, uh, development uh, a week ago when. Uh, a crowd of, of President Trump supporters uh, invaded uh, Capitol Hill. Um, and I just you know, wanted you to give us you, you know, a take. You know, the, the initial response here by, I think, uh, across Africa and across the developing world, actually, when you followed, was initially it was oh, a bit of you know, disbelief. Uh, humor, I mean, you know, because we, you know, we were watching television, watching guys with wearing bear skins and horns. It, it looked quite comical, but a bunch of clowns that invaded this place and are sort of doing stuff, you know. Um, of course, um, then the news came out that uh, we'd had deaths, you know, five people in total died. And it's now being described as an insurrection, insurrection and that some of these individuals had come there to hang uh the vice president and to you know kill the uh, you know madame pelosi um that's that's pretty alarming um what's what's your take uh you know why why this happened but more importantly what it means uh for america for american democracy uh number one and number two uh macau America has, you know, been sort of, the, you know, has been the default gold standard in terms of democracy. You know, even in Kenya, when we're writing our constitutions, it's American experts we copy. It's America that many countries look to uh, as a shining example of, of a free and open society with its many problems. Um, but suddenly we've seen a development here that, um, you know, and you know, it's, 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 it's been growing, you know, the last four years are sort of characterized by these kind of difficulties. So what does this do to America standing in the world um, as, uh, quote unquote, the world's democratic leader? Just wanted to get your reflections on those two questions. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, first of all, stipulate to a number of things that I think are important to lay the groundwork for our conversation. You know, the first thing I'd like to remind folks, um, your viewers, is that um, democracy or democratic government is an experiment. It, it, it's a journey. Um, yeah. You know, no one has really gotten there yes. as, as such. Yes. You know, clearly some countries have, um, you know, have more entrenched democratic traditions. 
um, and um, the democratic state is much more difficult to um, uh, attack, um, you know, or delegitimize in some states than in others. There's no question about that. And um, it, it clear the United States, you know, uh, falls in that category, you know, where the foundation of the country, uh, the normative foundation of democracy and the institutional foundation of democracy and the practice of democracy, the part of democracy, you know, is quite well rooted. Um, you know, having said that, let us also remember that this particular event that took place on Wednesday, startling as it is, and I think um, disgusting as it is, um, you know, because it's an attack on, uh, you know, perhaps the most important um, um, symbol of democracy around the world, yes. the American capital. It stands as, as the most important symbol of that, and people visit the place for that purpose. It's a fascinating place, by the way. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, but let, let us remember that this is not the first time the Capitol has been attacked. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the Capitol has been attacked many times before. So even as we, I think, hyperventilate about this, yes. we also have to put it in historical context. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, so I just going back historically, I look back to 1812 when the British in fact, try to burn down uh, the capital. Um, there have been other violent events or episodes there. Uh, in 19, I think, uh, 53, uh, some Puerto Rican freedom fighters, uh, you know, uh, shut up the capital, um, you know, looking for statehood. Um, you know, so there have been events like this in the past. I think what was startling and what made this different from the other is that it was an act of sedition yeah. by the president of the United States. Yeah. You know, um, it is not that someone, um, you know, ought to be very surprised uh, that it came, that, that Donald Trump's, uh, you know, presidency is going to end on this note. Yeah. Um, him essentially fomenting and um, unleashing a coup against his own, his own government. Mm. <laughs> no yes. one should be surprised by that. Yes. You know, we've been saying this uh, since he ran for office yeah. uh, in, 20, in 2015. There's yeah. no question about that. Yeah. You know, but what we saw there was, was something that was it's just unimaginable. Um, just to note several things there that I think uh, people should keep in mind. Um, in the initial, you know, sort of uh, footage that came out, I, I was actually watching it. Uh, as the people gathered, I was watching it on television. But as soon as I saw people break the cordon, you know, the first uh, the first line of defense uh, by the thin, you know, line of um, metropolitan capital police um, and others, when I saw that, I immediately told, um, you know, my wife that this is a coup. Okay. Immediately. It's a big word. Yeah, I think this is a coup attempt. And of course, you know, the word coup is not um, a, a normal lexicon in, in, in American uh, political science, you know, to describe the United States. No. You know, if you ask an American, you know, if you talk to an American, there's a coup happening in the United States, they will think that you are crazy. Yes. That is something that happens in banana republics, in uh, God for second places, you know, where there's no democracy and so on and so forth. So her reaction was, and she's a scholar like me, her reaction was, uh, you're not, you're kidding. I mean, this cannot be a coup. This is a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it quickly became clear to all of us that uh, it was an attempt uh, to um, overturn the government. Yeah. Um, and to perpetuate a leader who had been defeated, you know, in the election in power. Now, I'm told uh, by those who ought to know that uh, footage that is going to come out, um, you know, in the next few days, will even shock us about exactly what was going on in the Capitol. All right. Once, once this, this, these terrorists, these mobs of rioters and um, insurrectionists and insurgents, insurgents, you know, you know um, got into the Capitol, you know, some things to note here. Um, there's no doubt, in, 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 you know, in terms of what we know now, that they really wanted to do um, fatal harm to certain members of 
the first branch of government. Yes. You know, because the Congress is the first branch of government. You know, they were talking about hanging Mike, you know, Mike Pence. They were talking about, uh, you know, uh, killing Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker, you know, of the House and so on and so forth. Um, they obviously did not, you know, get to do that. Uh, thank goodness. Um, but it, it appears from what we know now that the, that the effort was well organized, well funded, um, and actually well executed to some extent. Uh, because we saw the president, uh, um, you know, at the ellipse in the White House. Yes. Um, essentially, roll up the crowd, you know, and essentially uh, order them to go and storm the Capitol. You know, and later, of course, um, you know, when um, they had ransacked the place, he came out and he said, we love you. Yeah. And he made that statement. You mm -hmm. know, it's a, so it's a coup d'etat by himself. So what does, what does all this mean, to, you know, to come back to your question? I think it means that, um, uh, first of all, uh, you know, that any democracy, in my view, is susceptible uh, to insurrection yeah. by anti-democrats, uh, by anti-constitutionalists. It's, it's, it, 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 there's really is no question about that. Any democracy can be reversed. Yes. Um, that's, that's the first thing uh, to realize. Because if the American democracy, which, as you say, is a kind of a gold standard, yeah. uh, could be so threatened, um, then no democracy is actually safe. You know? And so all of us must remember that it's an experiment. The second thing I think um, I want to caution uh, people about is, um, is even though the American democracy stands well above the others, as yeah. I've said, it's a journey. It's a journey. Yes. And this notion that people have of American exceptionalism, you know, that America is, is, is just a God, you know, chosen place that sits on a summit that all of us must look up to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that particular concept really should be put aside. Okay. I mean, those of us who are scholars do not really believe that. Um, the Americans themselves, actually, I don't think many of them who think about this, these things don't think of, don't don't believe that yeah. this is a country of Jim Crow. It is a country of the enslavement of Africans. It is a country of denial of civil rights. It is a country, you know, of uh, you know many many wars, you yeah. know, around the world. You know, so people should be sanguine about these things. Yes, you know, and not get ahead of themselves. Okay, okay, it, it, it clearly it's a very complex experiment. Okay, and one of the best complex experiments in democracy. That, and we have a lot to learn from it. Yes, there's no question about that. You know, and I think we should learn something from this experiment. You know, from, from, from this experience that that, uh, that 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 we are now going through. You know, that hopefully is is going to be behind us. You know, in you know when Joe Biden takes takes office uh, on the 20th of January. Um, you know, so you know. What I would say to people who are looking at this thing uh, from out of the United States is to say to them, look, um, if it can happen in the United States, it can happen to you too. Yes. Okay. Um, and that those who are struggling, you know, for democracy in their own countries should be vigilant, very, very vigilant. Um, you know, number one. Number two, you know, I think this does not mean that we have nothing to learn from the United States. You know, it does not mean that um, that U.S. power is is uh, is diminished around the world. Um, it, it it may mean that U.S. soft power will be much more difficult to exercise. Yes. You know, in the near term, it will be much more difficult to exercise. You know, but we live in a in a in, in a world in which. Um, you know, as far as I know, no other state has arisen in the last 50, uh, 67 years uh, to be able to exercise uh, the kind of influence uh, for good and sometimes for bad that the United States has been able to, you know, to, 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 to exercise. You know, and so, so, so I chasten people uh, not to hyperventilate. Uh, it is one, it is an episode, a very bad episode in American history. 
Um, from what I can see happening uh, today and, and going forward and in the last few days, uh, there's wide condemnation in a society uh, against these insurrectionists. You can see that Mr. Trump is, has become a pariah. Um, his businesses have, have been, have been uh, terminated. Um, you know, or the, the contracts of his business, businesses with many other uh, entities have been, have been, have been terminated. Um, you can see that he was kicked out of social media and so on and so forth. So there is a very large effort on the way to delegitimize the man. You know, what's going to happen going forward in the Republican Party is what's going to be very interesting. If, 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 if I, if I, yeah, that, that, that's a question that I uh, wanted to, to, to ask as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Because what we've seen happen to the Republican Party, almost going back to, to Nixon, um, where it's become a, you know, quite a unique political animal, um, uh, pushing narratives, especially around issues of race, uh, you know, America's position around, you know, the use of violence in other, in other countries that, that, that's quite uh, unique. Uh, and uh, so, in a sense, you know, there are those who would argue that, you know, Donald Trump was the product, really. You know, he, he, you know, people call him a fascist and all that. And we feel he's, again, it's excessive. Uh, he's, he's not a Mussolini or a Hitler. He doesn't have a big idea that he, he, he was selling. You know, the, the biggest idea he has, it seems to me, is himself. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, at the same time, you know, uh, Macau, 74 million, is it 74 million Americans voted for Donald Trump? It's the biggest turnout uh, in an American election in yes. the of American elections. Yes. Uh, and the country seems uh, very polarized and divided. The language, the language being used about America is language that America uses, usually, usually uses about yeah, you know the so-called what countries that Mr. Trump called the shit all countries. Yes, uh, true. Polarized, tribal, you know, uh -huh. uh, um, yeah. uh, corruption, and nepotism, yeah. you know, sort of all, all the adjectives that they usually apply to us. So, so you know, um, and so I'd like to to ask you about that, about you know, what does it, what does the election portend, um, especially yeah. given the, those those big figures? And number two, it is mm -hmm. clear that something. Something very major is happening within the Republican Party, and uh, yeah. you know you, you have to convince the younger generation that actually the Republican Party is is Lincoln's party. It's the party yeah. that was on the side of of, of, of ending slavery, and yeah. but here we are. And I'm very keen to to hear what your perspective is uh, yeah. on, on on how people voted and what it means, and 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 what next to the Republican Party is is there going to be a breakup of the Republican Party and have a Trump Party and a Republican? Mm -hmm. or how does it go? Yeah, so 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 we, perhaps we want to step back a little bit and think about uh, how we got here. Um, you know, I think you've seen since the nineteen eighties, you've seen a fatigue um, in. Um, the big idea of markets, the big idea of capitalism, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to create an ever expanding pie mm -hmm. uh, to fight poverty and privation. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily through, um, uh, through international trade. Yeah. Um, my view is that I think a lot of Western countries, led by the United States, uh, have not been able to adjust uh, to this, what I call the fatigue of, of capitalism. Yes. Um, um, we've seen uh, the creation of um, essence, essentially uh, um, a, um, a society defined by uh, a very wealthy top on the pyramid. Okay. Um, and a very poor bottom uh, where wealth has been essentially sucked upwards um, by oligarchs, uh, creating essentially what is a plutocracy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, taking the bowels out of the industrial state. Yeah. 
in the United States. Um, you know, and this has created uh, a, a, a large demographic of Americans who are just not, who cannot predict um, their own economic well-being. Yeah. You know, the state, the state is not able to give uh, economic meaning to their citizenship. Okay. Uh, now, a lot of non-white Americans, uh, black, brown peoples, you know, I've always lived a life of penury in this country, comparatively. Um, but a very large number of, of, uh, of white Americans have always relied on the state to create this large middle class. It, 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 or to enable that large middle class. That large middle class has been dwindling and struggling. You know, so this anger that you see uh, is a part of that. It's a part of the failure of um, capitalism to respond to, uh, to, to, the, to, 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 to the privation of the people, um, you know, based, based upon new dynamics. Um, you know, I think that the election of Barack Obama exacerbated this alienation because race is always in there and created this anger uh, that white people felt that their state was now not theirs anymore. Um, and so rallied around Trump. Don't forget that Trump arose um, into power through the, uh, the movement of bufferism, basically saying that, you know, Obama was not an American. Okay, very, very important point to make. Right. Um, and, and so the people in the Capitol who stormed the Capitol, uh, at least the frontline fighters, you know, what, form a large part of this group of individuals of white Americans um, who feel threatened uh, by the advance of other groups in the society um, and who find solace in Trump and who find a messiah in Trump. You know, so this is part of, so this is a challenge to democracy. And I've always said, uh, I, think I, I think I may have said this to you before, one of the biggest threat to, threats to American democracy is, is white subnationalism or white nationalism. It's a biggest threat to, to, to American democracy because that's what we saw at the Capitol the other day. So that's a problem. But this, this now brings me to your second question, which is what is happening to the Republican Party? And, and, um, and here I was, I, I'll say the Republican Party is many parties in one, okay? Uh, they are the Trump, you know, sort of populists, you know, you know, for whom he can do no wrong. Okay, then there are the traditional Republicans, you know, small government, um, you know, so-called law and order and so on and so forth. Um, you know, there are those. What has happened, what Trump did was to uh, mobilize a very vocal group uh, among his populist base. Okay, uh, who could at any given time do anything in the party. In fact, the party has no platform, as you know. No. You know, coming from twenty, uh, from, uh, from 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 the platform of 20, uh, 2019, the party. I mean, twenty twenty, the party had no platform. The platform was Trump. Okay. There was no big idea in the party. You know, someone said that that the Republican Party, you know, has become like a brothel that is that 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 is out to be rented. Yeah. You know, by anybody. Yeah. You know, and Trump rented the brothel and, and now owns the brothel. Uh, so. I think going forward, one or two things are, you know, is, is going to happen. I hear that Mitch McConnell is already trying to lead his own um, insurrection within the Republican Party. You know, he sees this as, as an opportunity for the party to make a clean break with Trump. That is why when Trump is impeached today, as he will be, maybe he has been impeached as, as we talk, when he's impeached today, of course, you have the distinction of being the only president to be impeached twice, which is incredible. Um, my sense is that the Republicans in the, in the Senate might join the Democrats to convict him, and subsequently then to hold another vote to bar him from ever holding office. Okay. Yeah. They need to do that because if they don't do that, he's going to haunt them and they will not go away. You know. 
And so, so this is what I hear that, that you know, the plan is. Um, what, what that plan means is that um, the traditional Republicans, you know, will take back, back their party. If they don't, the party is going to fracture and, and, and end as a political party as we know it. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's, that's major um, in, in terms of uh, political development in the U.S. But le let me, let, let, let me move a little bit to, you know, a reflection on, on Trump's legacy. Uh, yeah. And, and refocus on something which obviously for, for many, many of us in, across Africa and, and in the developed world where you have people of color, um, you know, is this, this bogeyman of race uh, that is so, it seems so essential to the foundation of what America is Ooh. and that really blew up uh, especially during this COVID period with the black, you know, black Lives Matter, we, you know, the, the resurgence mm -hmm. of it, it seems to have played you know, a role. You know, as, and you know, when I look at the results in, in Georgia, you look at the, you know, mm -hmm. the figures for the turnout of the African-American community in these elections, it was almost mm -hmm. an existential, um, you know, people, you know, you go out to vote, uh, you, know, you, vote you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, Comedian Dave Chappelle says, "You know, whenever America is in trouble, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, uh, the black people are, you know, have to come out and uh, do something about it." And that metaphor was well captured after this insurrection, when, after all the damage had been done, the next morning in the Capitol building, uh, all the guys, you know, many of the guys who were doing the cleaning up of, the, you know, of all the mess that had been left, uh, were African Americans, you know, and many. You know, I, it took me many years to realize Washington D.C. is a majority African American mm -hmm. uh, city. Yes, not really apparent when mm -hmm. you're on the capital. Um, but um, this is clearly something that America is. It, it's, a, it, it's something that America hasn't been able to shake off. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one is impressed, though, that you know, uh, you know, President-elect Biden, his his cabinet is more than half uh, people of color. Uh, half, half uh, are women. So, you know, again, that dynamism in, in the American democratic system, that ability to self-correct, continues to, to, to express it, it, itself. But I just wanted to ask you about this, this centrality of race in American yeah. political Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. First of all, let me just say, just to put it, um, you know, uh, on the table here, the capital was built by black people. That's right. You know, so like much else in the United States, and often without uh, being paid for their labor. <laughs> you know, so we stipulate to that fact, uh, you know, uh, so the capital really belongs to us because we built it yes. uh, in, in that, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Um, the second thing that, um, um, and, and it's interesting that it is the, the, the so-called citadel of American democracy. Yes. Uh, having been built by black people. But the most important point there is that African Americans have always been the engine yes. of change yes. that has extended the frontiers of American democracy. I mean, if you look at American democracy, at every stage, it's been advanced yes. by the struggles of black folk. Yes. You know, whether it was, uh, you know, the movement against slavery. Yes. Uh, whether it was a civil rights movement, um, you know, whether it, 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 it is now in uh, the reimagination of the Democratic Party, yes. you know, um, you look, for example, at, um, you know, uh, Joe Biden's victory, and you know, he would never, you know, have won this, first of all, the primaries. Correct. Uh, and of course, secondly, you know, the general election without African-American turnout. You've also noticed, by the way, um, uh, that where Trump has objected yeah. to election results, it's been in those areas where black turnout was the cause of his defeat. Yes. Uh, whether it's in Detroit, whether it is in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, whether it's in Atlanta and so on, Milwaukee and so on and so forth. Um, because I think that he believes in his heart 
that the votes of black people should not count at all. So he cannot understand why it is because of black votes that he was defeated. Um, and then to add insult to injury to him, uh, he watches uh, Georgia in the by-election. And he watches, you know, essentially a uh, very large African-American turnout, um, you know, propel the first black senator in the state of Georgia, uh, Raphael Warnock, uh, to the Senate and the first, the first Jewish American. Uh, you know, John Ossoff. So these are historic, historic things. Um, I happen to believe that John Ossoff, a great candidate, but was a great beneficiary of the vote, you know, by Raphael Warnock, uh, you know, from African-American side. Um, you know, so Joe Biden is going to be able to get his agenda passed through the Senate. Yes. Because of the black vote in Georgia. That's right. Okay, because Mitch McConnell will want to, you know, control the Senate. Yeah. Uh, so the confirmations, uh, you know, you know, the policy plans that must be passed and so on. You know, Joe Biden is going to have going to have an, an easier time getting his platform, you know, implemented. You know, so this is the centrality of the African American question uh, in the American democratic experiment. No one can tell you that that um, with a straight face that the uh, Democratic Party could be anywhere in the near power without the black vote, okay? We, the black people in the United States, a vote uh, of a world made for, for, you know, for the Democratic Party. That's right. And, and, and we don't do so because uh, it is a Democratic Party. We do so because it articulates policies that are democratic with a small d, yeah. you know, uh, that talk about you know, healthcare, that talk about housing, that talk about the environment, that talk about racial equality, that talk about all the things that, that give citizens uh, a reason to belong to a state. Okay? You know, and, and you can see, you know, you can just go to a political rally in the United States. I don't care where it is. Uh, and you, you go, look, go to a, a, a rally organized by Democrats and go to a rally organized by Republicans. The visuals are, as, as, are black and white. Literally black and white, <laughs> you know, one, 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 you know, rally will be mostly white, you know, rally will be um, multicultural, yeah. you know, so that's, that's, um, you know, the point I wanted to make to you. Just one, one final question, um, uh, Prof. Um, clearly, this, this is an important moment. Uh, we don't, you know, I, I take it, you know, I take your point very well. We should not overplay it. Uh, the capital has been attacked before. Um, and, you know... It's been, it's been desecrated before. Now, this might look very, very bad because of social media, right. uh, because, because of television and so on and so forth. It's been desecrated before. Although the way it was done here, I also must admit, was terrible. People peed on, you know, inside there. People left fishes on it, yeah. uh, you, know, on, 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 you know, on the corridors of, of, of the capital. Uh, it was just it was just meant to denigrate and desecrate the place and it, it it's just it's just sad it was just sad, very sad to watch very sad to watch um not, not, i mean no matter no matter what people feel about the united states no one wants that to be done no, no. any legislature no no. Yeah. no not at all not at all um how you know how does what's a good outcome out of this, uh, you know, America also has this tremendous. Yes, I always tell people, America is at once infuriating and inspiring at the same time. You know, it's, it's <laughs> an unusual country. As I said, it's a very unique uh, ex experiment. It's yeah. hugely inspiring in many ways. You know, inventive, dynamic. You know, etc. Uh, but also can be very, very uh, depressing place. But uh, at this moment, um, yeah. what needs to happen to? To, to get out of this and sort of, you know, regain, for America to sort of regain, the, you know, a lot of confidence has been lost in other parts of the world who said, hold on, we never expected that to happen. Well, uh, well, well first America. of all, America needs to uh, regain confidence in itself yeah. before other people can regain confidence, right. confidence in it. Yeah. Uh, so there are some things that I think are important here. You know, so over the last, I think, uh, you know, five or six election cycles, We've seen the formation of gridlock yeah. in this country. You know, 
Um, I, I remember, you know, when, uh, like, for example, when Speaker Tiponeo was, was Speaker of the House. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and, um, and, and Senator Mitchell was, was, was majority leader in, in, in the Senate. I remember people being confirmed by the Senate by a vote of 100 to 0. Yes. Yeah. Today you are lucky to get, uh, you know, 51 votes. Yes. You know, and, and this, this paralysis, this gridlock has just continued to harden, mm. you know. The rhetoric has become more caustic. Um, uh, people are visited apart and so on and so forth. So I think one good uh, one outcome out of all of this is people to say, hey, look, okay, we need to find a new consensus. Okay. We need to, to, to find a new governing consensus in this country. Um, you know, because I always tell people that um, democracy does not, works not because of laws. It no. works because of norms, where people, it's a give, it should be a give and take. Correct. And that your opponent is not your enemy. So, so just to say that, number one. The second thing, it will depend on what Biden does. Okay. Biden must go big. Yeah. He, he cannot deal. go small. New deal kind of uh, big. He has to go. He has to go back and look at, uh, you know, the new deal. He has to go yeah. back and look at what happened after the Great Depression. Yes. He has to go back and look at what happened in the 60s, you know, with the civil rights laws and so on and so forth. Okay. You know, because racial injustice is on the table. Economic injustice is on the table. Okay, he has to go big. You know, I was heartened to hear him say that. You know, to propose that uh, college loans should be forgiven yeah. because they hold people back. Yeah. You know, how can you go? You, we have seen during COVID, the United States literally write checks of trillions of dollars. Yes, if the U.S. can write those kinds of checks, really, to Americans, yeah. why can it not forgive? You know, uh, school. So he has to go big. Okay. And this going big will bring back faith, the faith of the people in the government, and give the people, uh, you know, the belief that the government can give economic meaning to their citizenship. This is very, very important. He has to go big. He cannot be timid. He cannot be timid. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, incisive as, as always. Um, um, so, uh, Joe Biden has to go for broke uh, yes, at this for moment for, for America to get its groove back. Uh, yes, yes. Asante Sana, uh, Prof, as always, uh, a great pleasure and a great learning experience speaking to you. And I look forward to our conversation, uh, the, the upcoming one. And uh, Asante Sana. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. <laughs>